24 hours ago, the National Lacrosse League announced its 14th team will be going to Fort Worth, Texas. And we welcome uh, to the program the commissioner of the NLL, Mr. Nick Sikavich. It is uh, his second appearance on the program. Commissioner Sikavich, uh, pleased to uh, join you today. How are you? Good, good. Can you hear me, Rod? Yeah, we got you, sir. Excellent. So, good. Doing well, doing well. All good in the NLL today and as well as yesterday. It was a great day for us. You got me. I thought it was Vegas. I did not see Fort Worth, Texas coming from anywhere. Great job in keeping that under wraps. Can you talk about the process to get to yesterday's announcement? Yeah, it was a, it was a long courtship. It was a couple of years uh, in the making. Uh, you know, we identified Dallas as a geographically strategic great spot for us to be in someday. Uh, someday soon, you know, as you know, a couple of years ago, we went to three conferences and um, Dallas just geographically, you know, central south part of North America, of the United States, great market, number five media market, you know, Nielsen rated number five media market. So very important from a television standpoint and television viewership to continue to grow uh, the viewership across the NLL and across the continent. Um, so geographically, great spot. It helps us build out our Western Conference even deeper, even further. Um, and then, you know, we had just a great owner. Uh, we've talked to a number of people down there who are interested, all the sports owners, I think at one time or another, we we chatted with and then landed on on Bill Cameron and and Greg Bibb, the owners of the WNBA team who have just done a spectacular job that all of that combined with just a world-class brand new venue in Dickey's Arena that uh, just opened up about five, six months ago, maybe seven months ago. Uh, it's just, it's the absolute best arena I've ever seen. It's its built like a Taj Mahal. Uh, some people call it the four seasons of arenas. It's really spectacular. So all the pieces came together over the last couple of years and we got to the finish line. Well, it's exciting, and I we have a lot to unpack here on this, by the way, and I, it, it warms my heart to talk NLL on national television uh, just to get the word out. Bill Cameron, the majority owner. Greg Bibb, the managing partner. Um, tell me a little bit about Bill Cameron, then, if he's the main money guy, and then also about Dickey's Arena. For those that don't know the Fort Worth geography, the Cowboys Stadium's there, the, um, the Rangers Stadium's there, so obviously they, they know their sports facilities. So tell me a bit about Dickey's Arena, too, like capacity and that kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, Bill Cameron is the majority owner. Um, he is a minority owner in the Oklahoma City Thunder of the NBA. He's um, uh, also the ma majority owner of the WNBA team that plays in Fort Worth, the Wings. Um, fantastic guy, self-made uh, chairman um, and part of the family that built American Fidelity Insurance Company. Uh, just a fantastic guy. Uh, and Greg Bibbs is managing partner in the wings as well. Greg is a longtime sports executive, uh, very strong operationally. Uh, the, the wings, the WNBA wings are, uh, I think last year they were the team of the year on the business side, led the league in sponsorship sales, led the league in ticket sales uh, in the Fort Worth market and in the WNBA. So really competent uh, professional sports team executives, so we couldn't have, we couldn't have found a better better group to own the team. Um, great resources. They have an operation in the wings already on the ground, and an eighteen month, roughly about an eighteen month window to launch the team. Um, so really pleased about that. Dickies, uh, what can I say about Dickies? They spared no expense building that building. Um, if we, I've toured it. A number of times it's 14,000 sets up at 14,000 seats for um, a, a hockey and lacrosse box um, the team there the NLL team there will be the primary tenant in the building so they'll it'll be their you know main uh, main show there the, the Dickies was really built also to accommodate the uh, the stock show in Texas, as many stock shows are very important. This one is like, I think, one of the largest in the world. Um, maybe Calgary's bigger, but I, you know, I, I heard that the stock show is really huge. So it was built purpose specific for that, but also to accommodate uh, other sporting events that have numerous uh, NCAA basketball events scheduled in their family shows. And the NLL team will be the primary tenant in what is just a spectacular arena. 
we'll get some um, backlash on this, but I think Denver's number one, Saskatchewan's number two, Houston's number three, Calgary's okay. four, and then four, and then four. You're talking to an ag guy here. That's the only reason I know Nick on that. Now, uh, well, you well, I know about. Stampede, well, hey, we fish. work we work good together then. But when I saw Texas, I was excited because I was just down there for three weeks over uh, the winter, and I know that the GDP, gross domestic product, uh, GDP of Texas is more than all of Canada. Hmm. So the money the money is there, uh, which you obviously know. Yeah, 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 exactly. A lot of it. <laughs> yeah, so to the uh, to the NLL itself. It must have killed you to pull the plug on the season because the last that we had you on, you were investigating every avenue. You must have looked at Hub Cities. Actually, I know you did. So can you talk about, you know, what came to that terminal conclusion? Yeah, it's it's been a long three, four months. And, and we, you know, the one thing I'll say, Rod, is, uh, first of all, so proud of the way the NLL managed through this situation. We kind of set up a a process by which we didn't make any knee jerk uh, announcements. We didn't react um, uh, emotionally to the situation. We just, we always had the safety of our players, our fans, um, and, and we had the health and safety of everybody as our first priority. And we just, we, we made some tough decisions. It was not a fun time. It was not a fun process. Uh, we, we worked really hard at a number of different scenarios to try to find a way First, to make up games that were suspended. Ultimately, we had to cancel the season because we just couldn't find a window. And then we focused our attention on trying to find different um, ways to finish the season and crown a champion, and there just weren't any. There were a number of challenges with player visas and crossing the U.S.-Canadian border. You're seeing that in Major League Baseball now with the Blue Jays unable to play in their home venue. Um, but I'm really p- proud of the fact that when we made an announcement, we made an announcement that stuck. We didn't have to backtrack uh, on anything. Uh, we didn't make any knee-jerk reactions. And it was all aimed with the players and fan safety first and foremost. And then we put a pin in it in, in June and just said, you know, better to focus on next year. We have a schedule to develop. Um, next year is going to be unique as well because this this thing just – keeps rolling and we're trying to figure out when the best time to start our season. And we just have a lot of work to do as we uh, really enter our 35th season. So we decided to focus our energies on that. That was my last question for you. When we can expect to start. I mean, you guys usually get rolling in December. So are you okay that way? Or what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, look, I think um, there's no certainty. The the one certain thing about COVID-19 and the environment that we're in is that there's no certainty. So we're being very careful to study this closely. And I could say with relative certainty that we're not starting in early December, as we usually do. Um, We're looking at different models starting potentially in January, February, and as late as March to, you know, get through this thing. Um, we, we, we don't, um, unfortunately are able to follow the news media to make our decisions. We take the guidance of our, of our doctors and our medical professionals and the people in the intelligence community that are giving us information on when communities will open up, when sports, uh, arenas will open up. We, we also created a COVID-19 committee at the league level, um, that is functioning to look at ways uh, to make sure that the fans and players can come back to our arenas safely. And and schedule is number one on the priority list right now. So we could be starting in January. We could be starting as late as March or late March, uh, depending on how this thing rolls. But whatever decision we make, we're going to make it in a way that uh, is an eye towards the health and safety of everybody. And we want to get those great fans in Saskatchewan back into that awesome arena and creating that great environment safely. No, cool. no question. Season ticket holder here. Uh, Nick, we got to bring you back because we're out of time here. We covered a lot of ground, but now we got viewer questions coming in from Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, all about their franchises. So can we uh, make a date for later in the summer? I don't think we're going to be doing much. So <laughs> can we get you on to answer some of your fans questions? <laughs> Anytime, Rod, happy to come on. You got an awesome show and I love being on you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe down there. 
All right. Thanks, Rod. You Commissioner too. of the uh, National Lacrosse League, Nick Sakavich, joining us from Philadelphia. So, uh... You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.